Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Sylvester Young. So today I am going to put on layer by layer my Little Red Riding Hood costume for you. Um, I am starting with the very base. Um, well, I guess add one layer. Um, I've got some cute tights on. I have a shaper just because I always feel like it kind of helps suck everything in. I'm a big fan of foundational garments for or like just for smoothing everything out. Not that this outfit necessarily needs it, although these uh these little shorts maybe do. <laughs> um I've got my bra on. I wanted to talk a little bit about so as you can see here, I, you can see two different sides. Um I had a really hard time finding a bra that like worked well underneath this. Um so I ended up with because I wanted specifically because I wanted a push-up bra. I wanted something that really like filled me out here. Um and I, the only thing I was able to find was this um, one that has, it has like a sort of a demi cup underneath, but then it has like uh, a regular cup kind of kind of like, or it has this piece that comes up, right? Um, so literally what I did, and you can't see it over here, it's done over here. I literally just did this. Safety pins are your best friends in costumes. They, they fix everything. So, let's clean up this bow a little bit. So yeah, I wanted to start from the base and talk about my whole outfit. Um, so this is what goes underneath the dirndl. Um, I love the little petticoat pants, petty pants, if you want to call them, or bloomers, whatever you want to call them. Um, I have a whole video about making this top and these bloomers. Um, I still feel like if I were to make them again, I would raise the waist on them. Um, I just, I don't like where they sit. They're a little bit weird. I would definitely give them a couple more inches. And I think I gave them a couple of inches when I made them too, but otherwise I like the pattern. I like the bottom. I like the way that they look. Um, I love this like front detailing. Uh, I'm really happy with them. And otherwise, I also would like stitch this down. It's not stitched, it's like it's weird. It, it wants to fold up like this all the time, and I kind of hate that. It's like a facing. Anyways, um, but yeah, so there, that's the under layer. So this is the under layer. So let's go ahead and add the dirndl. <laughs> so this is the dirndl. fits very well up top. I probably could have taken a little bit out of the shoulders, but overall it turned out quite well. Um, I chose not to do, because of how stiff this skirt ended up, I chose not to do any sort of petticoat underneath it. Um, these lovely little dirndl, um, uh, these little, little dirndl eyelets were the last thing that I got for this. Um, they were direct from Austria. I couldn't find anything similar in the U.S. and it took months to get them to me because of COVID and like mailing and everything. The Austrian post was down. Like it was a big old, old thing trying to get them. So I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. Like the detail in this, like I love, I love the, uh, trim down here and how I was able to put that in these center panels and everything and I love how my piping turned out on all of it. Um, it really, really just turned out to be, whoops, as I smacked my mirror, it turned out to be a really lovely like piece overall and I'm so happy with how it turned out um, and the amount of time and energy I put into it. So yeah, let's go ahead and add an apron. Okay, so here is the apron. Um, I again have a whole video about how I made this, how I did all of the lace insert on the um, all the lace piecing on on the um, apron portion, and then how um, and why I chose to make these extra long ties that go all the way around and come back and tie this lovely bow in the front. So um, and there's a whole German journal lacing code thing for during Oktoberfest. For if you're a server or if you're married or if you're 
available single woman. Yeah, so it's rather rather interesting and cute. So, um, but yeah, so here is it with the apron on. Um, and as you can see, like part of why the uh, lacing hooks, the eyelets, um, were set so high is so that they would sit above the waist of the apron. So the, the apron sits right at my waist and then these start just a little bit higher. And so that's why there was kind of a gap um, and not another hook one lower here. Just, you know, small detail things. Um, yeah, so at this point, I think we're going to go ahead and before I reveal the final look with the cape and everything, you can get my wig and my makeup on. All right, one second. Here we've added the wig. Um, it was a pretty simple wig. I got this off of eBay. Probably sitting a little far back. Um, I did some extra curls to it, but then I ended up deciding to do this whole like braided thing um, afterwards. It's a little messy right now. I didn't, uh, probably didn't take the amount of time restyling it that I should have. Uh, but yeah, so just pretty basic. Simple brown wig, um, you know, I put the little pink bow in it to kind of add to that. I played around a lot for a few days, like I, I, like I said, I added some extra curls to it. Um, it's a very soft curl, very natural, like soft curl, very like Nadia from what we do in our shadows type curl. Um, that actually might be that in the future, uh, because it, it would double as a cosplay wig for her. Um, but, uh, I'm trying to think what I wanted to say about this. Um, played around with it, tried some pigtails, tried some different things. The biggest thing is it, it is a lot of hair. There's a lot of hair in it. So I didn't want it too unruly or in the way. Um, and I also didn't want it covering up too much of my hard work with the journal. So it really needed to just be something kind of simple. And I felt like, um, this look with it pulled, you know, with the bangs and it pulled to the side, braided, it's very youthful, but still a little like sexy, but not too sexy. You know, we gotta walk that line <laughs> with this costume, I feel like. That was that was what I wanted. I wanted a, a costume I could kind of walk the line of being sexy, but also being like pretty and um, also very traditional with the whole dirndl thing. So let's go ahead and add some boots. I don't know. I feel like I should try that like TikTok transition thing where you throw the boots in the air and then kick and we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna put on boots. Um, so these are the boots I wore for the photo shoot. They are from Hot Topic. They are actually Supernatural boots, but I got them on a really good sale price. Um, so they do have like the Supernatural <laughs> symbol on the side and inside, but they're, they're damn good boots. Um, you know, like, And I think I honestly just put them on. Are you guys getting all the cleavage shots? Oh, I just thought of that. Um, I put them on and just tied them as is. Like, I probably had some socks for, you know, tromping around because they're a little big on me. I have teeny tiny ankles. Like, I have the tiniest ankles. I hate, uh, like, booties, like, you know, short boots, like ankle boots, because they are always too big around my ankle when I get to the size that I need for my foot. So, uh, am I starting to look like Little Red Riding Hood, or do we need the final piece de resistance, my red velvet cape? So let's, let's add that. So this is my cape, I'm just lined with white satin. I had to buy two different satins to get the right one because I ordered one that I thought I was going to be okay and it was so lightweight and crappy I was just so disappointed. Um, and then red velvet on the outside. This is a pain in the ass to sew. There is a reason I did not make a video of me sewing this and that is because it would have been full of a lot of me swearing, ripping things out, and repinning. Um, 
which I mean, I'm sure you guys would have enjoyed, but. My little, little red riding hood cape. So this was the, why can't I think of the name of the pattern company? Uh, Folkwear, sorry. <laughs> so this is the Folkwear Kinsale pattern, Kinsale cloak. Um, the actual pattern normally is really long. I chopped it off. I like, I had to math this out because I had, that was the other reason I didn't film it is because I was really worried that I was going to screw it up because I had only four yards of this fabric right here. Only four yards. <laughs> that like the fact that I got this cloak out of four yards of fabric is uh, pretty amazing, but it was because it was wide. It was very wide. I actually if I remember right, I think each of these panels is about a yard, maybe a little bit longer. There might be, I think the, each panel was 39 inches. Um, I just cut three of the panels. I didn't even, like, I followed the swoop on the Kinsale pattern, kind of, but I just, like, cut full width of the pattern. Um, and I cut the, I cut the um, uh, velvet first, and then I used the velvet to cut the lining. Um, as a pattern because I wanted it to be the same and then but it was like literally the like three three and a half yards was used in this cloak and then the last yard um, was this exciting hood which is very big um, I also really hate these bows like I like I get the point of it like because point is you're supposed to be able to like smooth this out and let it fall prettily over your shoulders you know let me see if I can get it a little more expanded I should take it off and do it Duh. Yeah, like the whole point is you can wear it with this down and then it does, and it does look very beautiful um you'll notice the red stitching <laughs> this red stitching i tried i actually ended up going back and doing the red over the white so i tried to like color match and i could not get the tension to work so that there was red on this side and white on this side i kept seeing the red on this side and i didn't have any good trim to um didn't have any good trim to kind of like hide it. So I ended up just saying, screw it. I'm gonna stitch around it in red so that it looks like the red is there on purpose. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to sort of be able to lay like this, which is really cute, right, and all. But then you're supposed to be able to, you know, pull it up and like drawstring it into a cute hood. But then the like bow is right in your face. So, I'm like, yeah, you can kind of tuck it back. You can kind of tuck it back in. Um, but I think especially because I chose satin on the inside, it really likes to slip a lot. Um, I did kind of end up using, after I tied it, like during the photo shoot, I, I, grabbed, I grabbed it and stuck a bobby pin through it and kind of used it to hold it to my hair. So this is it all like up and hooded. So very cute red riding hood. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it needs a little bit of a steam. It's been hanging in a closet. Um, but yeah, like overall, like I'm so happy to like do this project like do all of it start to finish have it all be done um i can't wait for halloween to come back and be a thing after the covid because i am totally going to a halloween party in this at some point um but i mean yeah like i just love it and it's like uh i think it's just a few inches longer than my fingers i wanted it slightly shorter than the skirt so you can still see the bottom of the skirt and um 
all of that, but slightly longer than my hands. I didn't want to do like a short, I thought about doing like a short cape, especially when I realized how little fabric there was, but I really liked the length. I think I, I think it really turned out to be a lovely, lovely costume. So yeah. All right, now let's take a look at some pictures from the photo shoots because they're beautiful. They're out in actual woodsiness and colorful leaves and fall and everything. And I hope you really enjoy it. from the photo shoot. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was just a very special like thing. Uh, I, I'm i just so ecstatic about how this turned out and I love it. Um, I hope that I get good use out of it and that, um, you know, it, it was just a fun outfit to make. Um, and sometimes, you know, like when things were the beginning of the pandemic things were really hard because I wasn't used to not working on stuff and so to like really have something to focus on helped me a lot um and so has this channel so I'm very very excited to kind of finally be able to show it all off um and have a little bit more in-depth discussion of it thank you so much for tuning in each week and watching my videos I really really appreciate every single one of you um whether you are someone who I've known for me for years online or uh, uh, in person or somebody new who just stumbled across me. I really do want to get to know everyone so feel free to leave me comments down below. We can chat or come visit my So Fast I Young Tumblr and check out what I have going on over there uh, or any of my other social medias including Instagram and TikTok all of that. You gotta be on all the social medias today. Um, yeah there should be in all my links floating around for those things. Uh, whether it's in the description box or on the main page for my channel. Um, I do really appreciate it all. Uh, remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so that you get notifications about when I upload. I now am trying to do both uh, shorts once a week and uh, a full video. Uh, I don't plan to just go to the shorts format but it is definitely helping get views and even subscribers. So pretty excited about that. Um, yeah, I love you all and hope you have a wonderful week. Mwah. Bye. Oh, where is that? That's why I use giant big wood pins. Easier to find most of the time. There's still one in here. Haha, <laughs> there it is.